Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. Um, I thought in this video we'd go over some four stroke theory and to be more precise, um, variable valve timing. Um, I had the opportunity to strip a brand new Nissan engine down at uni and I was able to get a hold of the parts for these videos so I thought I'd go through some of them with you. Now, to start off with we have both the cams here off the engine now. On the inlet side it had a variable valve system and on the exhaust side it just had a standard camshaft so I thought it was a good way to compare the both. Now the actual standard camshaft, like I say a standard cam, just got lobes, fixed gear at the end which has run off the crank at half the speed. Basically this hasn't changed for numerous years since the four stroke engine was made. Um, that's just basic four stroke technology right there. But if we compare that to the actual variable valve timing cam we can see there's a couple of differences. Firstly we have um, this housing here which is actually the actuator which is mounted onto the spur gear and then the cam is actually mounted onto an internal um, stator which can actually move um, varying angles in relation to the spur gear but we shall get onto that when we start stripping this bit down and at the right hand side here we actually have a cam positioning sensor because we are able to actually vary the angle in relation to the spur gear the actual ECU has to keep track of that with these um, teeth gears as you would say and that's basically it, the two differences so we can take out the standard cam and actually look more at the, um, the variable cam system now this system is actually called variable cam phasing so basically what that means is the whole cam has an adjustment an angular adjustment in relation to this spur gear here, it's normally around about 20 degrees um, give or take, but that that's normally the, the average of what these systems use and it's all controlled off this valve here and basically what the engine does is depending on engine speeds, loads and so on and so forth it just the oil supply into these grooves here and there's four holes, two in each of the grooves, which then feed into this um, hydraulic actuator. So we shall get onto that now. Now, okay, now for the more interesting part of this video, where we're actually going to strip down the hydraulic actuator, which um, is responsible for the angular adjustment of the camshaft. Um, oop, just move the paper there. So I've already loosened off all the screws here, just for ease of this video, and. I'm guessing all you who are watching this do know how to unscrew bolts and screws so I'm not going to put you through that. First thing that comes off we have the retainer plate which sits on top and basically keeps the whole assembly together and it also acts as a sealing surface for all these hydraulic chambers here which we shall get onto in a bit. So that's that, that's out of the way. Now we can actually get into the more interesting parts of this setup. So what we have here is an actuator housing which is physically attached onto this spur gear assembly here and then we have an inner, an inner stator and this inner stator is actually attached onto the camshaft we then have the spur gear assembly here and basically this is attached to the outer housing via three bolts and this little um, locating pin here we also have this plunger here on the stator which actually mates into this hole here. Now what that's for is when the um, the engine is in its, well once a, the default cam setting it's all locked into place so that plunger here locates into that hole and it's locked. The stator is physically locked to the um, spur gear at the end here. So basically when it's in this position it's acting like any other cam would. It's fixed, it's not going to move. Now when the engine decides it wants to actually do some adjustment it sends oil a certain oil ways. Now the first thing it's going to do is have to is going to have to retract this plunger and that's what this oil way leading to the plunger does so it sends oil pressure to this plunger and pushes it in which disengages it from the actual spur gear so it's now not a physical link to the spur gear. It then starts to transmit oil pressure into these small chambers here through this oil way here and this physically starts to turn the stator through a set angle and then that then corresponds to an angle on the camshaft which then would adjust the valve timing in the engine and all this time this actual locking um, 
piston here is just sliding on a flat surface. And that's it, that's, that's how simple this system is and then if the engine wants to go back to where it was before it um, diverts the oil pressure from these chambers here and there's another one there to that chamber, that chamber and that chamber and this chamber is actually fed through the side here and it will rotate it back to its default position and because the oil pressure is no longer going to this piston, this piston has now been forced back down by this spring and then it actually locates back into its little seat there and the state was back into its fixed position and that's basically it, that's how simple this system is by just using a hydraulic um, valve here which is controlled off the ECU um, it actuates the cam and varies the valve timing depending on engine speed, engine load and so on and so forth and it's just so simple. Um, the only other features that this uh, actually has is some um, sealing blocks here which are pressed against the stator and the actual housing via springs to just keep the oil pressure in, in the places where it needs to be. And it's, it is, it's just such a simple system. Um, there's a lot, a lot of cars are starting to go with this system now just because, well, you've seen it, it's simple and it's also cheap. Um, Take for example Honda VTEC, um, very good system, um, used on a lot of Honda engines and basically these engines were unbustable but they've decided instead of going for the VTEC way which um, was more expensive and more complex, they've now put that, um, made that redundant and stopped actually making them systems and now going for more traditional ways, well I say traditional, more simple ways like this system. Um, but yeah, it, it the thing I like about systems like this, it does a job, it does it well, but it's simple. It's no, there's no complexity behind it. And you can also get a system where instead of having a hydraulic actuator, you have an electric actuator. So instead of having a valve there, you've just literally got an electric motor which basically twists it depending on where the ECU wants it. So basically takes out all the um, oil feeds that you need going into the centre of this stator. But yeah, that's it, plain and simple. Um, I hope this is um, enlightened due to the way of variable phasing timing, as this system is variable phasing cam timing, as you would say. I have to say that's slow because it is a bit of a mouthful, but that's what this system is. Um, I hope you, like I say, have got something from it, and um, keep safe. I'm hoping to put more four-stroke videos up because I've got a few more parts to go over, so keep your eye out. And I shall see you later.